signs of life on an exoplanet? What's up with that? I got with me David Kipping. David, welcome back. Yeah, yeah. So this is not the first time we've seen an announcement of biomarkers indicating the possible existence of life. So it's not the detection of life, it's the detection of gases involved in life as we know it. Yes. Yeah, I mean, how do you detect life directly? We, don't, we can't even decide what life even is. So coming up with a way to detect it directly is very difficult. These are just the, uh, the, the, the contaminants that they would release essentially into the atmosphere that we can then detect and say, hey, maybe this- Wait a minute, is that. the oxygen from a tree a contaminant? I mean, in a way, it's a waste product in a way, right? If photosynthesis <laughs> produces that. So, if you're a tree. Yeah, yes. I wouldn't think of it that way, but the tree might. <laughs> so uh, just remind me, this is 120 light years away. It's a planet discovered from the Kepler mission. Yeah, Kepler-2. It had a failure after four years. It couldn't stare at the same stars anymore, but it could do a second phase of the mission where it looks at the ecliptic plane only. So during that phase, it detected K218 just to get the, the physics of the detection straight. So you've got a star, you've got the exoplanet orbiting the star, light from the star goes through the atmosphere mm -hmm. and comes to you after it's been touched by the yeah. gaseous signatures in the atmosphere of the planet. Contaminated even. Contaminated. Yeah. <laughs> you need the Webb telescope to make this measurement. Yeah, I mean, you can do it with other telescopes. I mean, Hubble has looked at this before with wide field chemistry, that's an instrument on there. In that case, they weren't able to detect anything conclusively. And so once JWST came around, everyone was very excited because this is one of the best targets. It's a nice puffy atmosphere around a bright star that's nearby. So everyone knew this would always be a good planet. Oh, they knew at. that. Okay, yeah. okay. So what does it mean for a planet to have a puffy atmosphere? Puffy atmosphere, the three ingredients are low surface gravity, ideally. This doesn't really have that, but it's not too bad. You want a hot, warm planet. That's useful because it puffs up the gas. It so heats get, up the gas. Exactly, right. so mm -hmm. you get a puffy atmosphere. And you want a light molecular gas because that can go higher in the gravitational well and make a larger atmosphere. And when you have a puffy atmosphere as it passes in front of the host star, yeah. there's more... There's more for us to see. More for you to see. Yeah. And the list of biomarkers, last I checked, is pretty large even methane, yet we have lakes of methane on Saturn's moon Titan, mm -hmm. but no one's saying it's a place thriving with life. So it's not just the existence of the chemical, it's the conditions under which you expect to find the chemical. Yes, the context is extremely important. So for instance, with this planet, there is some debate about what the planet really is. One idea is this is an ocean world called a Hacian world. So this is a thin hydrogen atmosphere. Yes. And beneath it, you have ocean. So there is a surface. Hy Hy Hycean? Hycean. Your guess 